All right. Welcome back to another right. contained from the couch. With me today, I have my coworker. I got the direction right. Uh, I have my coworker, Pond Mystery. And we're he's gonna be here today uh, to talk to us about well all things security, uh, especially when it comes to EKS. He's our uh, resident security go-to. So um, I thought we should have him on and we should uh, talk about some security uh, EKS related topics. And as it happens, Pavan actually uh, wrote a blog recently about uh, getting the CIS benchmark rolled out and working for uh, your EKS workloads. So uh, it seemed yeah. perfect to have him come on and talk about that. Um, but Pavan, you've been on the show once or twice. I can't remember exactly, but uh, let's yes. let's talk yeah. about you. Tell tell us about yourself. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Brent. And uh, great to be here again. And uh, we don't have our usual host, uh, Adam, who is out on vacation somewhere. Nice, hopefully. Or in his I'm backyard. I'm guessing on a beach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> great. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, no, great, great to be here again. Um, we covered uh, our back uh, briefly in, in, in our show last week. I think it was Monday or Tuesday. I don't remember. Um, but we got some good, re really good interaction, and uh, yeah, really psyched and excited to to be here and cover CIS uh, Amazon EKS benchmark. Um, so, um, so yeah, about me, I have been with AWS nearly six years in various roles, all related to security. Um, hopefully, my audio is okay, Brent. Is it okay? It's all good. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Great. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, I've been uh, doing security for a while now. Um, in various functions when it comes to compliance or security assurance within AWS or um, solutions or architecture. So I was previously a uh, security solutions architect, a specialist architect, um, and was based out of Europe. So I was working with our European customers within AWS um, and um, local office was in London, but used to travel across Europe and, and discuss AWS security and compliance. Um, so lots of great friends and colleagues there who are still continuing the good work. And uh, more recently, as you probably know, like I moved to join um, join Brent in Texas. So hello, y'all. <laughs> nice. So, how do y'all? <laughs> how do y'all? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so getting used to the heat here, and uh, it's been really um, really great to get settled down and um, getting used to used to working out of our out of our home. So yeah, it's great. Yeah. Did you see my uh, barbecue tweet from the weekend? I so... did. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, you had something really nice cooked up by the end of the day. So uh, <laughs> amazing. Yeah, totally. So uh, I have two basic hobbies. Uh, one is smoking meat and. Uh, the other is uh, new. It's uh, watching Formula One. And yeah. I got into Formula One like only maybe a month ago. So I am a baby when it comes to understanding what's going on and everything. But at the same time, like it's it's pretty awesome to watch. And, and the races, uh, from what I gathered so far, tend to be in the morning, my, my time zone. So I got up and threw a big hunk of meat on the smoker that was going to take all day and and uh then you know started watching the race and it was pretty it was pretty great so i love yeah love being able to do great. that and have something to watch while i'm smoking meat so looks like we have yeah. a couple questions uh already so uh oh, okay. oh welcome back w shari he he was saying yep Hello, we were here last shari, monday yes, yeah. Really good and, <laughs> and then he wants to know how is the AWS work culture different between Europe and the US so far? That's an interesting question. Yeah, so I think we are um, 
we are connected as in i used to work closely with uh, the the us um folks and teams and we have various events like reinvent and reinforce for example um which happen in the us so um teams from around the world end up meeting our our teams in in the us and sharing knowledge uh, as well so i think the the culture remains the same uh, it's just that we are in a um it's a personal level kind of decision where you'd like to be based on based at and and what what excites you really so and that's that's really a, a unique thing where um what i've found with with AWS and amazon in general is um you can identify what interests you over a period of time and and you have a, a good opportunity to move across and and do what whatever you enjoy and you're, you're passionate about so i've kind yeah. of gradually found my uh, passion around container security from uh, assurance and that's that's what i'm doing right now so that's all good yeah that's awesome and he says wish you the best in texas um as a yeah as a developer advocate i've traveled the world uh speaking at conferences and working with different teams and going to meetings for customers you know around the world and i can say that uh it to me it always felt basically the same i mean the customer is going to be different obviously going to be some subtle differences in uh, the culture and, and that sort of thing. But for the most part, the set of problems that people trying, are trying to solve is about the same. The concerns that people have, the, you know, they're about the same. Uh, you know, the talking, uh, what comes up that you need to address, you know, it's, it's kind of funny how it's the same everywhere. Um, and that's the kind of thing that we like to address at scale. You know, when we see a problem that we want to solve for for our customers, we want to solve that problem for as many or all of our customers as we can. So, um, so yeah, it ends up being like very, very much the same. And when I work with uh, you know counterparts in other countries, um, it's it's kind of just plug and go. You know, it's very simple, very easy to up and going so and in fact we will very likely have uh some additional develop, developer advocates on the show in the near future and speaking of that uh let me throw up a quick banner real quick if you didn't know this already we're having a container day uh the day before the european CubeCon. so august 17th 2020 uh, you can see the URL here, awscontainerday.splashthat.com is the sign up for it. It's completely free uh, and it's running in the U.S. time zone, uh, you know, like the timed Pacific and Eastern for convenience. Uh, so, yeah, definitely day zero event for KubeCon, but also U.S. timed. Uh, so feel free to sign up for that. I encourage everyone to sign up. Uh, will be there you'll see pavan you'll see me you'll see adam uh you'll see other developer advocates you'll see other uh, product managers we're gonna have three live q a sessions so um not only will there be sessions that where we'll be announcing some really cool features and stuff but we're also then going to have people on live for you to be able to toss questions at them uh, in chat and have, you know, have your questions answered immediately. So uh, definitely join. Uh, there's no no reason not to. It's going to be pretty awesome. So sign up uh, August 17th, awscontainerday.splashthat.com. So, um, yeah. Awesome. Great. Yeah, I'll, I'll be doing a session on CIS uh, benchmark again. So yeah, if you if you'd like to join, you can join and find out more about it. <laughs> That's right. So should we get down to it? Speaking of the benchmark, I think we should. Yeah, sure. Let's, uh, let's, let's go ahead. Yeah, it's we'll ten minutes. Kick the, the couch out of the way and sure. uh, let's switch over. I'll switch over to your screen share. Okay, great. Yeah. So. Um, so we introduced the CIS Amazon EKS benchmark on 21st July, um, so just uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, and 
and um, it, it's, it's come from our customers. So we always like to work backwards from our customers and understand what they, what they need. And, and uh, what I was seeing personally in my interactions with our customers uh, and requests coming in were that our customers wanted to um, implement or use the CIS Kubernetes benchmark uh, in, in a way that they can get something out of it. And they're always like, kind of continuously seeking some guidance from us. And what uh, what we wanted to do was to provide something that is, of course, a, a guidance document like a CIS benchmark, but also um, a tool that they can use uh, against it. So rather than just having a document which they read through and gather understanding of, um, if you have looked at CIS benchmarks, they are fairly technical. So yeah, they are oriented against uh, configuration guidelines. So if you have a physical copy of the benchmark, of any of the benchmarks, they they give you less value. Um, yes, they provide you understanding of what the configuration would should be like, but to actually go on and hands-on sort of being operational and assess against the benchmark, you need to introduce some sort of automation around it. Um, so that was the goal that I had in terms of how can how can I run this program and, and launch something which which is useful for our customers? Um, so before we start, I mean, I'd love to give you some background on what CIS is. Um, so CIS is uh, stands for Center for Internet Security, and they have a, a sort of free membership and a free login registration program where you can uh, you can go in and register with them and. What, what they would provide you is a list of benchmarks, which is kind of a good practice or a best practice guidance around uh, operating system layers, applications like server software, desktop, all these um, different categories that you may want guidance on. Um, so if you're an administrator or, 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 or even a, a, dev, a sort of DevOps, um, sort of a team member, um, developer, who you'd want to, um, sort of configure Amazon Web Services securely um, or any of the other sort of uh, software, then CIS provides you with, with that guidance and they, um, they have those free benchmarks for you. Um, there are hardened images as well and a number of other services that you can explore. Um, so the process that we would follow is, and it's, it's a community driven engagement as well so when we talk about uh, a number of other benchmarks so in the in the blog i have sort of listed out um, a number of benchmarks that amazon web services and uh, amazon in general have um, previously published with cis so these are some of the links that you can find on the blog um, and it it deals with aws as a, as a cloud provider and how to secure amazon web services uh, when you're using 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 our service, um, so to give you some context around CIS Kubernetes benchmark, because that's where the CIS EKS or Amazon EKS benchmark derives from. Um, let me take you through um, the actual benchmark. So that should give you an idea around how would how did the did the program started or the initiative start. Um, so uh, here you can see this is a version one, like the first version of Kubernetes benchmark, which published in on 15th of May 2017. So uh, more than three years ago, um, the efforts around securing Kubernetes started, and we had the formal kind of benchmark out, and it was a great attempt by the community. Um, and 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 we can, I think, we can see the contributors who are. Uh, who were involved in this. So yes, Rory uh, McCune, who is a um, Scotland-based um, security researcher with NCC Group, who I had the privilege to, to meet previously, and uh, a number of other in individuals who have contributed and have been contributing ever since, I think. So, uh, so they, have, uh, they, have, they have built, helped build this uh, initiative and they are still continuing to do so. So Rory in particular has um, reviewed and contributed to Amazon EKS uh, benchmark as well. And um, that's 
230 pages that we're looking at in the PDF, right? The the benchmark yes. itself. Yes. I remember I used to work in a regulated field and mm -hmm. I remember um, being handed, you know, having to sit with an auditor and being handed a document very similar to this and we just had to go like item by item and check each thing and um having the automation that you mentioned earlier like having that automated would have been so awesome because you could just basically you know hand the auditor some output uh, from the automation that would have been that would have been game changing so um this is this is so cool to see great yeah um so um, we have, I think we have in, integrated some of the CIS guidance for AWS into some of our tools as well, like um, AWS Security Hub would, um, does have definitions around the security, found, the foundations benchmark for AWS. So it automatically sort of checks against that program and says, here's where you're missing appropriate configurations within AWS. So, we and that's our message from our CISO as well, um, Steve Schmidt, is to remove the human component from our operations as much as we can, and we want to offer that to our uh, customers as well. Yeah, and W. Shari says that's what Puppet, Ansible, and others did for us when it comes to audits. And yeah, I totally agree. That's what I would have to show our auditor was the the bits in Ansible that would go out and actively set a control you know the appropriate way um but you still had to do that whereas if you could just you know show this and confirm you know that the environment is set the way it should be uh that that would still be pretty next level there was um there was an effort that i that i was thinking i should start never did start it uh, way back those years ago where we were going to write um, Ansible for uh, reaching out and confirming all the controls were set appropriately. And we were treating it kind of like a, the way you do test-driven development where you write the tests mm -hmm. and then you go back and you uh, fill in you know, the code so that your tests start to pass. So what we were planning to write was the tests for um, you know, all of these uh, controls to see if they're there and then just go back and make sure that they all start to pass. So, yeah. but anyway, that's, that's I don't want to derail. That's kind of a just historical uh, memory of mine. So we can get back to modern day times now. Great. And we have, um, we have AWS config, which allows us to kind of historically move, look at the movement in the configurations and, and identify uh, changes. So that's the concern behind behind sort of, that's the concern which is addressed behind creating something like the Kubernetes benchmark because it's a um, it's a relatively complex system when it comes to the control plane and the data plane and then um, and then customers would like to understand are there any changes that happen which um, reduces or, or or sort of uh, introduces any attack vectors on on the on the control plane or, or the data plane depends on what you're managing. So, uh, so that's the origin around the CIS uh, Kubernetes benchmark, and uh, and the Kubernetes benchmark deals with a number of things. I think I have, I'm doing something really brave today, which is using um, Sidecar, um, which is a new function introduced, um, uh, a new function introduced by. Uh, by the Mac OS uh, team, but I think I've failed already because I can't <laughs> see my sidecar. <laughs> so, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully they should, they should work. But what I was hoping to do was to, uh, to show you. Uh, You're further along screen. than I am because I couldn't even get sidecar to work. Right. Yeah, you must, so, uh, you must be using your personal Mac. Yeah. Um, OK, have I have I lost? lost You've you? we've you dropped your screen share. So okay. if you want to share that again, 
uh, you can. Okay. All right. So uh, sorry about that. Um, but these no are the fun and games around screen sharing and tech. Um, <laughs> Okay, so I think, yeah, that's, I mean, hopefully you can see the screen, which is kind of driven through Sidecar and I have my iPad connected. So um, so the, the reason for doing this is to give you a context around how it all fits in and where we, where, where does the EKS or Kubernetes benchmark fit into the whole Kubernetes architecture? Um, so um, you'd have, um, as many of you would know, you'd have the control plane, um, which has various components uh, for Kubernetes. Um, so there are um, you, you come across um, come across components like the controller. Apologies for my handwriting. That's writing on iPad good. is it's not better than mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so controller, etcd, the scheduler, and the API server amongst uh, the uh, components, and um, and then there is the the nodes of the cluster, the data plane, where you'd have different nodes which are which are sort of supporting your your workloads. Um, so, in terms of um, all right, uh, hopefully, yeah, that's that's clear. But yeah, in terms of um, the security configuration and the scope of the CIS Kubernetes benchmark. This is this is what it covers really. So it provides security good practices for all of all of um, Kubernetes implementation. So if you are managing both the control plane and the data plane and and the nodes within within your cluster, then uh, Kubernetes provides guidance for securing securing those. Um, the difference with Amazon EKS and other managed Kubernetes services is that um, uh, AWS and uh, and others we provide a, a managed control plane. So we provide an assurance to our customer that we will maintain the security and uh, availability and integrity of our um, of our uh, of our environment and uh, and that the responsibility around nodes. If you're using managed nodes or self-managed nodes, then you would, um, then you would, um, you'd be responsible for those. Uh, it's not the case for Fargate. So if you are using Fargate to run your workloads for EKS, then, uh, then that's a different uh, then, then you're not responsible for for managing configuration of your of your nodes because there's you don't see the nodes or manage them anyway. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. So, there would need to be almost like a middle, you know, like gray area for Fargate where it's in the data plane, but you don't you don't have to manage it and you're not responsible for it. Correct. So. That brings us to the scope of Amazon EKS, um, Amazon EKS uh, sort of service and uh, the, the the benchmark actually. Sorry, the CIS benchmark uh, and and that uh, addresses managed and uh, self managed um, nodes rather than Fargate. So um, if you if you are dealing with managed and self managed nodes, then uh, Kubernetes EK, sort of e, Amazon EKS benchmark is the, is the right one for you. So, um, so even within within the nodes, uh, when it comes to um, when it comes to the configuration of the nodes, you'd see that um, the EKS Kubernetes, the Amazon EKS benchmark, deals with the Kubernetes components within the nodes. Um, so, rather than the security of the whole node as as a function, the Kubernetes, the CIS EKS benchmark, and even the Kubernetes benchmark deals with the the configuration of Kubernetes components within the nodes. So that's a that's a key piece to understand is is you're not securing the whole node, but just 
the the Kubernetes components, which is the kubelet and the kubelet configuration, and all the configurations that come with running uh, workloads on on the cluster on the nodes. What about the uh, container runtime? Would that be part of it, or would that be outside of it? Uh, so, in terms of configuration guidelines, um, the benchmark does not include um, the runtime uh, security. Uh, so that comes with with whoever the provider is. So um, the the providers select the runtime um, based on their preference and how they want to provide the service. So there are some provide <coughs> excuse me. So there are some providers who provide Container D as a runtime. Um, we have Docker, but we are working on our Container D implementation. Um, so uh, so that is not covered uh, within within the within the benchmark. Okay. And then Texan Raj asks, and let me see if I can take a crack at answering it, uh, just to confirm that I, uh, you know, heard you heard you correctly. Uh, so Texan Raj asks, it's not for the master nodes, correct? So from what I gathered, if you're talking about a do-it-yourself Kubernetes cluster where you are managing the control plane, then you can run the K8 uh, benchmark and cover the control plane and the data plane. If you're running EKS, however, uh, there's a different benchmark. There's the benchmark for EKS, and that doesn't look at the control plane. It only uh, focuses on the data plane. Did I get that right? That's correct, yes, yeah. Cool. So, uh, um, W. Sorry, Shari yeah. says, uh, Cube have some node components when it comes to security, uh, e.g. App Armor, SE Linux, Kubelet config, CNI plugin, and uh, as Brent Contain said, container runtime updates and configs. What is that a question or statement? I think it's just a statement. <laughs> I, um, yeah. So, so yeah, there, there is there is um, guidance around like pod security policies. And network policies and a number of other components we can we can go through, um, but in in terms of the actual automation piece and the nodes, um, we have we have the automation introduced uh, within the Kubernetes components, which is the kubelet and the kubelet configuration. Yeah. So when it comes to SE Linux and App Armor, those would be more like operating system level. Uh, Kubelet would definitely part be part of this benchmark. Uh, the CNI plugin would that be part of this benchmark, or would that be too vendor specific, or maybe too vendor specific? We do have recommendations around the network policy and the CNI plugin, as in uh, do keep the plugin up to date. Um, so we have a network policy section. Um, however, we, we there is we haven't introduced a way to automate it just because of the way the tools are configured and the limitations around um, how, how we can how we can check for it. So um, so that's uh, that's something we 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 can work on as in we can introduce in the next iteration. And it's a live document. So all the CIS benchmarks are public. You can register and contributing to them. Um, so that's a great way to engage with the community, but also impact um, impact uh, with with your knowledge and 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 introduce um, like contribute to these benchmarks. Uh, awesome. So there is there is meetings and updated um, cycles. You can register on the benchmark. You get access to the workbench tool and you can start start working on um, contributing. Very cool. Um, so. To give you to give you an idea around, um, so hopefully this clarifies where the benchmark sort of sits and what does it address. So if you're if you're working on managing the the whole sort of Kubernetes platform, which includes the control plane and the data plane, then the CIS Kubernetes benchmark is for you. And the latest version of that benchmark is um, 1.6. It was released 23rd July, I think just a few days after we released our our Amazon EKS benchmark. So so that's the that's the benchmark if you're using um, a fully managed um, 
which you're managing a fully managed Kubernetes imp implementation. But if you are if you are using a managed service, then there are other benchmarks in the work as well. So if you are an Oracle Cloud user, there is an Oracle Cloud benchmark in the works if you want to contribute. Um, uh, and and th there's a few more which are in the works as well. But uh, eventually, what I see is that each managed implementation uh, might have uh, similar guidance for them or for the customers to to use. Um, so uh, so when it comes to when it comes to securing managed nodes and and sort of self-managed nodes, a good example is something I'd like to take you through before we jump into our our EKS workshop demo, which is where we go hands-on with the assessment. Um, so here we go. So in terms of security issues within um, Kubernetes and um, and the hosts even on gen in general, uh, we do publish uh, any significant issues that may come up on our security bulletin. So you'd have container I mean, more recently, you had um, the container networking security issue, which we kind of addressed. And um, we had the CVE and the guidance related to it. But we also introduced it within our uh, GitHub sort of roadmap, our, our containers roadmap. And we that's the way we communicate with our customers. So uh, our security experts and colleague Micah sort of did a post around it on what we are doing around it and then um, we had an update around the optimized army which was patched and we provided that to our customers so if you're using a managed node group then that's um, you are responsible to update your armies and make sure you're using the up-to-date armies which addresses the uh, security incidents like these and keeps your uh, keeps your data plane or the node secure Okay. Um, do we have There's any questions, a, Brent? There were there was a good question. Uh, Texan Raj was asking, uh, Container D is more performant, right? What's our timeline to get Container D? And I actually pasted him a link to your GitHub issue, as a matter of fact, <laughs> um, where uh, we it, we talk about uh, bringing in Container D and the latest um, the latest information in the issue is that Mike Stefaniak actually points out that uh, we're using Containerd today when you're running uh, Fargate for EKS. And uh, our latest plan is to integrate uh, Bottle Rocket into the, uh, into the data plane. And when we do that, that should bring Containerd functionality. So uh, I think basically the short answer is when Bottle Rocket goes GA, that's when we'll have Container D available. And um, so that's, I think that's pretty exciting. And we'll have a show on Bottle Rocket coming up pretty soon because that's, you know, all this stuff works together and it all, you know, helps enhance your security profile. So having the benchmark, uh, you know, passing is certainly uh, one piece of the recipe and then also uh, decreasing your footprint and what's you know what is out there for uh, being able to execute and stuff like that that would be uh, another you know another really cool uh, thing and bottle rockets gonna help with that so uh, we're gonna have a show on bottle rocket coming up very soon watch Twitter uh, for for an announcement there and also, we're going to have a talk at the AWS Container Day on Bottle Rocket, and we'll have uh, at least one of the engineers uh, that works on the project there giving a talk. So you'll want to join in there as well. I think that's going to be a really great uh, talk. So, um, so yeah, let's. That so yeah, that hopefully answers the D question. And uh, otherwise, let's dive back into the benchmark. Can we see it? Can we see it in action? Sure. Um, sure. So, um, just to give you some context around what we'll be doing uh, on the uh, on our sort of exercise is we I have a I have a one node cluster running. Actually, there are three with different um, 
different armies running. But uh, what what we'll see is when you run a uh, cube cube bench, which is the uh, open source tool published by uh, published by Aquasec. Uh, we have integrated our EKS benchmark definitions into cube bench, so version 1.0, which is our current version. So you can um, actually quite easily run that assessment by um, one downloading the the tool into your node. That's the hard way. But then you can also run it as a as a job, uh, a job on 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 your cluster. So you can do uh, a quick YAML as a as the job definition, and then uh, we can run the we can run the check, and it will provide the results in in logs of the of the job. So there's a pod which is created for the job, and then it within the logs of the pod you'd have the assessment results running out of which were produced out of KubeBench. Um, yeah. So those are the two day, two ways we look at uh, in terms of assessing your node against um, the CIS Amazon EKS benchmark. And Texan Raj wants to know, would you be able to run the KH benchmark on Bottle Rocket? And I think the answer is yes, because you can deploy it as a job and you don't have to then worry about, you know, with Bottle Rocket, uh, part of its security posture is uh, that you don't log in and get direct access to the host OS without jumping through some hoops. So, um, but deploying uh, a container to it using Kubernetes uh, is certainly possible. So, um, do you think uh, that we'd be able to deploy the benchmark to a Bottle Rocket host and get back get back results? Um, I don't. Um... I don't think so because the implementation of Bottle Rocket, as far as I've seen, is um, different from what what we are running as a as an Amazon Linux host. And um, I'd have to check, but um, from what I've seen, there is the Bottle Rocket sort of node is pretty restrictive um, node Fair. and it's hardened node, so mm -hmm. it has SE Linux policies running and. Uh, to run something like KubeBench, you'd have to, uh, and again, we need to look at the Kubelet implementation as well. So how is the Kubelet run? So that's something I haven't checked. Um, yeah. What kind of flags and parameters does it, does it run with? So, so there's yeah. something we can explore in the next episode. Absolutely. So W. Shari uh, is just clarifying. Oh, so Bottle Rocket is like Flatcar, Flatcar OS, and Red Hat Core OS, and the alike, and or for the, Fedora core of this? Anyway, I don't remember. Uh, yes is the answer. It's uh, an operating system built uh, specifically to run containers. And so the what's available at the host level is incredibly stripped down, including no package manager, no compiler, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's pretty amazing. Um, but because of that, if we try to run the benchmark and gather data about the operating system and its configuration, the utilities that you would normally use to gather information aren't going to be in Bottle Rocket, most likely. So, um, so yeah, we probably, we, while it could technically run, we probably wouldn't get the result we were really looking for. And then, um, yeah, uh, Texan Raj mentions it doesn't allow privilege escalation, so maybe it won't work. Just guessing. Uh, w Shari wants to know: Do you manage Bottle Rocket Cluster API? Bottle Rocket Cluster API? Don't. Oh, do you manage using Bottle Rocket Cluster? Oh, using an API maybe. Um, you can manage. So the integration with EKS. And Bottle Rocket, we need to explore ourselves. So that can be something that we can save uh, for the show. The last time I looked at Bottle Rocket uh, was very early in its days, and it was still, you know, I could I could integrate it and run stuff uh, on it from ECS, uh, but I don't think I ever got around to tying it into. No, I did tie it into EKS, and I launched some containers onto it. But as far as yeah. managing the config of it directly and, and using uh, Kubernetes constructs to reconfigure the Bottle Rocket OS, I never did that. There wasn't a way to do that yet, but let's look at it again and see if there is now. 
I mean, yeah. in a future show, not today. <laughs> yeah. That'd be a great, uh, great show. Um, so looking forward to that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, let's jump into, given that we have 20 minutes, less than 20 minutes. So let's jump into the workshop. Uh, you'd find the CIS benchmark um, chapter within the intermediate section. Um, so here, if you click on the CIS EKS benchmark assessment using QBench, um, it would take this to the to the exercise and then um, provide you some context around the CIS benchmark. And Don't click the video. That'll be our live stream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it might so, cause a tear in the space-time continuum. Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah, here we go. So we have the... first step around getting the nodes. I was just playing around with this yesterday and trying to try out different nodes with different OSs. But in the context of time, we'll, um, we'll take a look at the Amazon Linux 2, um, which is the latest as in the managed node group version. And SSH into into one of the nodes. Um, so SSH as an EC2 user. That's the IP. Okay. And the next step is where I mean this is the this is the step where we download the actual um, actual tool and install it um, so we're just installing that into our node and then it's pretty simple can't get easier than this is to just run the benchmark against the that's it i mean there you go so you run mm -hmm. the run the benchmark uh, against eks one definition which is what you'd find when you download the the benchmark um, so this is the automation piece where we are looking at assessing the worker node security configuration and the, how how the kubelet is configured in particular. And there are a number of checks which are performed at um, worker node configuration file um, level and at a kubelet level as well. There are two sections within section three: uh, so worker node worker node configuration files and kubelet. So all are the I mean these are the flags which are assessed. Uh, to a, a secure setting as recommended by the CIS benchmark. And, and then you'd get uh, the results. So you get 14 checks which pass, and there is one warning. And the warning is with regards to the event QPS argument. Um, so again, this is um, this, this argument is in the benchmark, it's not scored. Um, and hence, it's a warning because we talk to our engineers and our engineers have taken a really close look at these assessments and they were not in the favor of setting it to a different level so um and that's to do with the the restriction or the thresholds around the request and what that introduces in terms of performance to your to your cluster so uh, so that's the reason this warning appears but again as a owner of security and the configuration of your clusters, you can go ahead and change it depending on your risk um, management and risk appetite levels. OK, so that's a, that's a quick assessment around using it as a, as, as a binary, as an install. And then you can also, um, there is also a way to, there are a couple of more ways to assess and take a look at the, the benchmark. One is using a job file, which I previously mentioned. So this step just creates a job file for you, um, a YAML. So you have a job eks.yaml, which essentially runs a, a command as a, the same command as a, as a pod within your environment as a, as a job. So what this would do is create a pod and run the job for you 
and and if we look at the pods it's completed the job and all we need to do is to look at Uh, okay, that's something I didn't expect. So, um, <laughs> that happens. Yeah. So, I um, mean, the expectation is ah, okay, I understand. So, this is this is to do with this is to do with the other sections within the benchmark. So, apart from section three, you'd have section four, five, and uh, yeah, four and five, which are assessed as in there isn't a way to uh, configure and assess them automatically. Uh, but this is um, running against a, another sort of configuration where you're getting two checks fail and 12 checks pass. Um, so let's take a look. Okay, so something something has changed, which I I need to look at, as in what what changed within the benchmark. Maybe we need to update the uh, update the nodes to an updated army, and we can run the benchmark again. But the expected output is that we'd get fourteen checks, which would pass, and then one warning around the event QPS. Which well, do you know which, which host would... this job ran on? Maybe it ran on an older. You know, you had three different. Ah, hosts. okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's the, that's that's the reason. So uh, remember, we did Jupiter uh, sort of get nodes O wide. That's what I. That's it. Yeah. It just got me confused. <laughs> but yeah, um, I was trying this last night. I was too late. But yeah, I was picking another host which wasn't updated, and that's why. Mm. And this is a good demo piece. Like. It wasn't intended, but it happened, so that's good. Um, where we have a Ubuntu um, sort of node running, uh, which is running really old, I mean, relatively old version of uh, of the army, and another Ubuntu node with some other version, and hence it's kind of failing on us and alerting us on these these issues which are there. So it's a good way to test out your your cluster and and recognize that there are some some security configuration issues um, and uh, and find out really quickly to react. Yep. Uh, OK, so so that's that's another way. And, and the only difference between this and the next step, which which is the part of the, the chapter is if you want to debug the QBench tool, there is um, there is a way to do that, and th th that's the command. As in, that's that's what you'd use to send the logs to ST standard error, error and then um, and use it at at the verbox like um, verbos mode, and you'd get all the checks which happen against the node, and you'd get a really detailed result out of it. So if you want to try it out yourself, that's a great exercise for your. Uh, for your Q Kubernetes or Amazon EKS nodes, um, take a look and give it a give it a go. I mean, I've shared some of the output here. Really it's good quite detailed perverse, output. Yeah. Yeah. So, so hopefully, I mean, this gives you an idea around the CI CKS benchmark. Um, what I wanted to do as well was take a look at some of the. Yeah. If we have some of the sections within the EKS benchmark, which gives you which give you some context. Um, sorry about the scrolling, but oh, one 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 more thing. I would like to recognize the contributors to this benchmark because without them, this wouldn't have been possible. So. Um, Michael Hausenbass, who is our security DA as well, security expert within within our team, one of our colleagues, um, uh, developer advocate 
based out of Ireland. Um, Rory, as I mentioned before, um, Angus Lees, who is one of our engineers, uh, and uh, Abir Sethi as well, one of our engineers. So uh, they have looked at uh, the benchmark closely and contributed really significantly. So thank you very much to, to them. Um, so what I was going to show you real quick is, is the different sections which you may want to pay attention to as well. Um, so one is, so the way the benchmark is broken into is you'd have the control plane components. We don't have control plane components because it's a managed service and that's been agreed with, with the CIS um, committee and that's a guidance from them as well. Uh, for the control plane configuration, we have provided guidance around logging, so enabling the logs, but these are not automated, so you can introduce automation within the worker node checks. Um, so the QBench test looks at the worker node um, assessments in terms of security configuration, and then you have the good practices within uh, policies. So that's something Dr. Shari was mentioning around how to introduce restrictions on um, containers, like through pod security policies, and when certain sort of configurations like um, SE Linux or AppArmor configurations within your containers. So, um, so those can be done through through this guidance. Um, um, so look through look through these manage and section five is managed services around uh, some more good practices where we provide guidance around IAM and key management service. And this is a good plug for our episode tomorrow. So um, <laughs> tomorrow we'll take a look at um, secret encryption within uh, AWS. Um, so within within Amazon EKS. So uh, we'll take a look at how. It's implemented, go deep dive into the different configurations and make you understand what the security issues are with, uh, with keeping secrets within etcd store as is without securing yep. them through AWS KMS. So Texan Raj wants to know, are you guys going to do a session on OPA? And yes is the answer uh we're working out the schedule we want to get michael hassenbloss actually on uh along with uh pavan and we want to we run through opa and and do uh some content there so it'll be coming up in the next uh couple of weeks probably uh but no definitive date just yet but definitely watch twitter watch our uh if you don't know about our youtube uh channel you can uh go to uh, bit.ly in fact let me just paste the link here uh, and you could subscribe there and we actually kind of publish a few days in advance what uh, what our schedule will be and we're still looking for even better ways to communicate the upcoming schedule and to even take uh, take input on what you guys want to see and then the other question Texan Raj has was, can you send the info to Container Insights? And I think he's talking about the log info from uh, the job run. And surely you can. It's just log output, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I personally haven't tested this. But again, since you saw that configuration around sending the log out to the verbose mode logs out to um, standard sort of log output so i think that that would i would see that to be working with container insights um yeah yeah i believe i can't think of any reason why that couldn't work um and then uh texan raj says you rock and i have to say right back you rock and pavan yes. rocks yes. because uh this benchmark i think was kind of your uh sort of you know your you were the one that drove this thing, right? So you Absolutely. saw the need and you uh, talked with the customers and discovered that this is something that we were missing and you drove the whole project along with alongside the engineers to make corrections uh, so that we could get, you know, we could get the benchmark up and running and also passing and then had to work with uh, CIS to get, you know, to get this uh, in. So, I mean, you did a lot of work on this, and I applaud you. I think it's uh, pretty great. Thanks very much, Brent. I think it's it's the customers. I mean, they kept on um, asking us where 
uh, when we are going to provide guidance and we want to do the right thing rather than just explain them the gaps. Um, I think what, what uh, we want to do if going further as well is to improve that experience. So we keep on iterating on our, our features and that's what we'll keep on doing as in working on improving that experience and integrating more with, with how we can provide a seamless service um, to secure uh, EKS. Um, by the way, I mean, Amazon EKS on the control plane side has uh, the assurances that you'd need. So uh, you'd have the external reports that you can access using AWS Artifact and take a look at those. So if you need to demonstrate compliance for the control plane uh, with your auditors or external auditors or assessors, uh, that's where you'd go and demonstrate compliance for your Amazon EKS uh, control plane. Um, cool. But yeah, hopefully, hopefully this was useful and we'll talk about uh, the secrets encryption tomorrow on Amazon EKS. Mm -hmm. So do join in. But uh, yeah, any, any questions? Which have Last little bit uh, to close it out. W. Shari says, I would like to see how not to abstract AWS services using operators, then corrected. I mean, how to abstract AWS services using operators. Well, as it so happens, you should join Container Day on uh, August 17th. We are going to have a session on that. And then for the rest of that, that is a Monday. And for the rest of the week, uh, we're going to try and keep the focus on Kubernetes. So uh, on containers from the couch, 18th, 19th, and 20th, uh, we're going to keep the focus on Kubernetes. And that is going to be one of the things that we cover. So we'll have an announcement on the 17th, a, a walkthrough and stuff like that, and, and some live Q&A. And then 18, sometime in the 18, 19, and 20th range, we will uh, try and dive into that a little bit um, in a little bit more detail. And Worry 21's already, uh, already with the spoilers, Worry, uh, I think you should look out for AWS controller for Kubernetes ACK. So yeah, definitely uh, that's going to be what we're going to what we're going to look at. All right, thanks everyone for joining today. I thought uh, it was a great session and loved seeing the benchmark work. Definitely go out and benchmark all of your uh, your clusters and and see what you come back with, and hopefully that encourages you to keep your AMIs up to date and get those patched. So. Until Absolutely. tomorrow, uh, you Thanks, know, everyone come for back, yeah. join Pavan and me tomorrow, and we'll talk uh, encryption and KMS. Will do, yeah.